Can everybody hear me? Does it sound good? Is there any echo or anything? All right, the PowerPoint's pulling up here. And I'm ready to go whenever we are ready. All right, here we go. Today's lesson is about Latin verbs of the first conjugation. In Latin, there are four conjugations of verbs, and there are six tenses. So today, we're only going to learn how to form the imperfect tense of the first conjugation. So the first thing you'll need to know is what makes a verb first conjugation. So here are a few examples of first conjugation verbs. And let's see if you can see a pattern. Go ahead and type something in on the chat if you see anything. With woco, wocare, porto, portare, amo, amare, sto, stare, supero, superare. Right. What a lot of you are saying is that you see an O ending for the first principal part and an A-R-E ending in the second principal part. That's exactly correct. So, here are the rules for first conjugation. First conjugation verbs always end in O in the first principal part, which would be like WOCO. They always end in A-R-E in the second principal part, which would be WOCARE. And if all else fails, you can always look up a verb in a dictionary and they'll put the conjugation number after it. So you'll see a big number one. So that's first conjugation verbs. So here's a poll question. Which of these verbs is not a first conjugation verb? So clamo, clamare, copio, copere, capi, coptus, dubito, dubitare, or do, dare. So go ahead and pay your vote. And it looks like the overwhelming majority is going with number two, which is copio copere, capi coptus. And that is the correct answer. So the first conjugation ends in O in the first principal part and A-R-E in the second principal part. So here's the imperfect tense. So within the first conjugation, this is how you form the imperfect tense. There are three steps. The first step is you have to find the present stem. The second step is you have to add a BA, like the sound that a sheep makes, ba. And the third step is that you have to add the personal ending. So step one is the stem. Step two is the ba. And step three is the personal ending. So in a previous lesson yesterday, we had already figured out how to form the present stem because the present tense uses the present stem. But let's review that. To find the present stem, you go to the second principal part and you take off the RE. So if you have wokare, that will become woka. That's your present stem. The same for portare goes to porta. Amare goes to ama. For the, per, for the present stem, and star A goes to sta. So this is step one, finding the present stem. Go to the second principal part and take off the RE. So let's have another poll question here. What is the present stem of supero superare? Is it one supero? two superare, three superar, 
or four supera supera. So go ahead and vote on our poll. All right, it looks like most of you chose correctly number four, super a, uh, which is the present stem. Some of you were putting number one, which is just the first principal part. Remember that the present stem, you go to the second principal part and take off the re. So that's stem. Now, step two, you have to add a ba, and the ba is called the tense indicator for the imperfect tense. So here are some examples. For woko wokare, you would have wokaba. For portare, you go to porta plus ba, portaba. Amaba for amo amare, and staba for sto stare. So woka would be the present stem. Ba is your tense indicator for the imperfect tense. So this is step two. The ba, like the sound a sheep makes, ba. And again, we have already had the personal endings because we learned the present tense yesterday. So we all remember that for the present tense and for the imperfect tense, your personal endings are for the first singular O or M, second singular S, third singular T, first plural mus, second plural tis, and third plural NT. And the reason we have a little Mickey Mouse picture up here is, if you're familiar with the Mickey Mouse song from the Mickey Mouse Club, it goes something like, M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E, -E, Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. And you can actually sing the endings along with that. So it would go something like, O-M-S-T-M-U-S-T-I-S-N-T, -S Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. So that's an easy way to remember these endings. So for the first singular, for the imperfect, you're always going to use an M, unlike the present tense yesterday where we used an O. So it'll be M-S-T, mustis, N-T. So that's step three, personal endings. So here's our formula one more time. You have the stem, which is just taking the R-E off the second principal part. You've got the ba, and then you've got the personal ending. So here's the full conjugation for two verbs. Woko wokare. It would be wokabam, wokabas, wokabat, wokabamus, wokabatis, wokabant. And for porto, portare, it'll be portabam, portabas, portabat, portabamus, portabatis, portabant. And right now, we have not learned how to translate this in English yet, but we will cover that tomorrow. There are certain ways that you would translate this into English with each personal ending. So here we have a couple more poll questions. Which of these verbs is in the imperfect tense? So we're looking for, yes, it is in the imperfect tense. Superant, number one. Number two, da bunt. Number three, superabat or number four, da bit. So go ahead and select your answer there. Good, it looks like most people have indicated that number three is correct, superabot. A few of you said number one, which is superant, that is actually uh, present tense, so you need to have a ba, got to have that sheep sound, that ba, for the imperfect tense. All right, any questions about that one? Doesn't look like anybody's raised their hand. Let's move on to the next example here. Which verb is not in the imperfect tense? So this is the opposite of the last one. We're looking for everything. So we're looking for the one that is not in the imperfect. Number one, dubita batis, wokamus, amabam, or stabamus.
So go ahead and indicate a little poll there. Very good. Overwhelming majority is correct with Wokamos. Wokamos is actually the present tense of Woko Wokare, and it's the first plural. So it would mean we do call. Very good. So now you've learned how to generate first conjugation verbs that are in the imperfect tense. And tomorrow we're going to have a little quiz on Woko. You're going to conjugate woko in the imperfect tense for every person. So that would be your woka bomb, woka boss, woka bot, woka bombus, woka botis, woka bond. So remember to study that tonight, and that's in your book if you want to review that. And go home and tell your parents that you now know how to generate imperfect verbs in the first conjugation. Thank you.